Before we discuss X-ray diffraction, also known as X-ray crystallography, let's recall the single and double slit experiments. Now, in these experiments, visible light, one form of electromagnetic radiation, was used to essentially produce a diffraction pattern on the screen. Now, this was only possible because the size of the openings, the size of the slits, were on the same order as the wavelength of visible light, about 10 to negative 6 meters. So basically, because the size of the opening was about the same as the wavelength of visible light when the rays of light passed through those openings they diffracted and they interfered constructively and destructively and that led to the diffraction pattern the bright and dark fringes formed on this screen now if the wavelength of light if the wavelength of electromagnetic radiation is much smaller than the size of the openings then no diffraction pattern is actually observed now that's exactly what happened when scientists tried to essentially point the x-rays at these double slits. No diffraction took place. That's because the size of the wavelength of x-rays is much much smaller than the size of these openings. So the difficulty in producing a diffraction pattern using x-rays lies in the fact that x-rays have a very small wavelength about 10 to negative 10 meters which is much smaller than the size of the slits which is about 10 to negative 6 meters so basically when scientists took those x-rays and they allowed those x-rays to pass through the openings these openings were so large compared to the wavelength of those x-rays that no diffraction actually took place now, in the year 1912, a German physicist by the name of Max von Laue came up with a clever solution to this problem. So, in 1912, Max von Laue suggested that a crystal lattice composed of atoms might just have a spacing between the atoms that is small enough to actually create a diffraction pattern using x-rays. So, to see exactly what we mean, let's look look at the following diagram. So, these red atoms are our atoms that form the following crystal lattice that looks like this. So, let's suppose we have x-rays which are coming as shown in the following diagram. So, we have x-ray 1 and x-ray 2. Now, because they're coming from very far away, we're assuming they're parallel with respect to one another. Now, when they hit the following plane, of the crystal lattice shown by the following dashed line, they make an angle theta with respect to this plane. So, once again, in a crystal lattice, atoms are arranged as shown in this diagram. Now, the separation distance is on the order of the wavelength of the x-rays. In fact, the distance between our two atoms is 10 to negative 10 meters, which is about the same as the wavelength of our x-rays. Now, two incident x-rays, as shown, are parallel to one another and make an angle theta with respect to the plane of the atoms. Now, when x-ray 1 and x-ray 2 reflect they will interfere constructively with one another when they travel a total distance that differs by a whole number multiple of their wavelength. That is, these two waves, once they actually reflect, they will interfere constructively only if the distance they travel, the difference in that distance, is a whole number multiple of their wavelength. So, basically notice, Let's suppose we have the screen somewhere here. This upper wave, wave number two, will travel less than this lower wave. And that lower wave will travel a distance of d sine theta less. So basically, if this is equal to a whole number multiple, then that basically means they will interfere constructively and they will form bright fringes on some viewing screen in 
in the same way that bright fringes were formed in the following double slit experiment. So, once again, when X-ray 1 and X-ray 2 reflect, they will interfere constructively when they travel a total distance that differs by a whole number multiple of their wavelength, that is, when the two waves are fully in phase. And the equation that gives us this relationship, that gives us the location where they will interfere constructively, is given by this formula, which is known as Bragg equation after the English physicist who essentially derived it. Now, m is simply a positive integer. It could be 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Lambda is the wavelength of that x-ray, and d is our separation distance between our two atoms. It's basically the size of our slit. It's the size of our opening. And the angle theta is the angle that the incident x-ray makes with respect to the plane of this crystal lattice. So once again, this equation is useful because of the following reason. If the wavelength is known and the angle theta can be calculated, then the distance, the separation distance between any two atoms in our structure can actually be determined. And this is the entire basis of a process known as X-ray diffraction or X-ray crystallography. In fact, X-ray crystallography was used to essentially determine the structure of things like D DNA, which is a biomolecule, and important proteins in the blood, for example, myoglobin and hemoglobin.